Hey everyone, it is Kai, and it is Thursday, so that means it is time for some top decks. Now, this is the second week that English is merged with the JP format, which is great. I mean, the only difference is that there's Monster Strike in Japan, and that is a big deal. That is actually a big deal. And in the next few weeks, we will be getting Lyrical Monasterio as well, but they don't really impact the main set, so that's all good. That's all G. I don't have to... I have to split things up, so easy times for me, right? We're gonna go through the lists via like kind of the meta order. I've put, you know, the Dark Zones and the uh, the Bastion dot Clan dot Nation. I mean, first as usual. If you are a VG Top Decks hashtag subscriber, um, you are put at the end of the each section, and we will go through your lists with way more care, way more care. All right. But we will go through the Japanese list first. Uh, there is actually a slight decrease in the amount of lists, which is overall good times for me. That means I can go through them quicker, but we will kind of skip through the Bruce and the Bastions because I think we're pretty much solved. We'll know all that and get on talking with the rest of the metagame. So first off, we got Bruce, right? We've got Bruce. We've, got, we've seen this list quite a lot, but this guy is actually running a slightly less standard list with the tw two, uh, two 20k order, order shields. Now, I just want to say that, again, with the over-trigger lineup, this is... I think I think the Dark Days over-trigger lineup is the correct one. If you trigger it early, it is a it is a nice crit that lasts for the whole game and will just steamroll you for the win. Uh, if it is triggered later, then it is a 100 million crit, which is still fine because your, your columns hit super massive anyway. The, the, the double 100 million line is kind of not going to matter as much because they're pretty much forced to perfect out anyway, right? So I, I think the currently in this kind of meta, the 100 million crit is correct. So right now you can see a lot of lists are running that and a lot of them are also running seven draws as well. Seven draws, no crits because, you know, when uh when the format is just revolving around getting pieces, getting perfect guards, then crits become slightly less value. But, you know, you still have a crit. If your opponent looks at you and goes, he's running a seven draw build, mate. I'm not going to guard that. And then randomly you trigger that crit, you win the game, so... <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, so, yep, yeah, pretty standard list now. Um, again, also no Edens with this list, but it's uh, it's up to whoever wants to pilot it. They can add Edens or not. That's, that's kind of it. All right, uh, moving on, let's take a look at another list. We'll go. We'll try and go through these quick, right? This guy is running, this guy is running Rainbow, Rainbow level, two Edens, cool, with Mabels. All right, it's pretty, pretty nice. I think that's... Did my, did my internet crash? <laughs> I think that those kind of lists are a bit out of date. The, the multiple Mabel lists like, just feel like they're from last year. Not really last year, but you know, from a, f from a few few months ago or a month ago when, when the lists weren't as developed. This one is running actually just no draws. He's running heavy amounts of crit with Mabel. So I guess, you know, triggering crits also can win you the game, which is, I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, and then here we have a four Eden list, four Eden list with crits, draws, with the rainbow trigger lineup, all right, nice. And then here is a three Eden list with multi draw, like a massive draw, full draw, full draw lineup. Uh, here is two, two 20k shields, two 20k shields, uh, rainbow trigger lineup, right? A lot of, like, although the lists are basically fixed, there are some slight flex slots you can change with just the trigger lineup. You're gonna add 20k shields and things like that. Three Edens. Like, if you're running like something like three Edens, it's going to be hard to put in 20k shield, so that's why you're cutting things. Um, crits, rainbow trigger lineup. And then finally, okay, we're moving on to the English format. So new English players had a week to, to kind of play, play the new decks, and now they can kind of maximize their decks or make them better. So first we have NY Cardfight, shop tournament was held today at the Rift in Peekskill, New York. So first was Bruce, played by Rory, uh, Usagi Vanguard. Um, that, and then second was Hexa Orb by Lexi, and then third was Overlord by Mario, and fourth was Snow, um, so Seraph Snow, I guess, played by Thompson, so congratulations. This one is running three Hellblasts, Hellblast, and, you know, with the Rainbow Trigger lineup, no, fr actually, no, not Rainbow Trigger, no fronts, which is kind of interesting. I feel like, you know, the fronts are just so strong, but interesting to see this list not running it at all. Um, so good job, good job. Uh, next we have is Rose Velvet, is the AGCD standard remote fight um, champion was Saran playing Bruce, second was Ben Tan playing Dragonic Overlord, and third place was Rose Velvet playing Bruce. Uh, congrats to all. Uh, so, yep, this is looks like it's Saran this playing only true Hellblast, which is interesting, but with one Colossus here, 
All right, and the rest of it, you know, rainbow trigger lineup. All right, we actually have a comment from Saram here as well. Uh, he is saying, uh, I never realized how insane Bruce's kill potential is till today. Had to try it for myself, I guess. I went first the entire day, I think. So, yeah, it's, I think, normally people would know that Bruce is very, very strong. But when you actually play it and then, you know, combine your hell dives and things like that, you're like, wow, this is ridiculous. This is actually insane. You just kill from two. So after you play it, you know it's super strong. But if you've only heard of it, you still kind of know it's strong, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, don't underestimate the kill potential of this deck. You, you, you probably aren't safe, even if you're at two. Uh, that's why the deck is crazy good, All right? Uh, moving on, this is going to be the last Bruce deck today. This is by David Ma. Training Grounds Edmonton Saturday Locals made second place with Bruce. Um, so his list is not running front. So that's actually... Oh, no. There, no, there it is. Okay. I'm, I'm blind. All right, it's been a long day, right? My eyes aren't adjusted. I've stayed at home for the last month or so because I've been in lockdown. So... Yeah, but no, he's running one draw. <laughs> one draw, I guess. This is a one draw build. Uh, I guess it's two draw of the over trigger. Uh, but with three Hellblasts, you know, three Edens still, three Edens. I can't wait to see when, like, if English players start cutting the Edens, right? That, that would be the next step in just like, adding more, more cards, more utility, I guess. But this is, uh, this is pretty good, All right? Good job, man. Good job. All right. Uh, we actually have Barrow Magnus lists this week. So this is from Japan. Uh, we just got, I think, pretty, I think there's a pretty standard Barrow Magnus list right now. Um, just a bunch of soul charges. Basically, nothing's changed for you, um, except for the fact that everything else has changed. And that just means no good times. No good times with this deck when, you know, your, your defensive power is still pretty weak. Uh, you, you still have your one gimmick, but everything else is just hitting way harder. So I can kind of see why. Like, unfortunately, when I look at Barrow Magnus list nowadays, it just kind of, nothing really pops out. Nothing's like crazy. Oh yeah, this is, this is why I'm playing this deck because it doesn't have Leonard. It doesn't have Leonard. Um, but we actually have an English one today. We got, hey, it's Artie. Uh, played an early B205 tournament for Digimon today and had a blast. Then played an overdress tournament after and hated it despite placing. Lost in Swiss and in top cut due to Miracle Heal. The game knows I hate over triggers, so it's just going to make sure I get sacked in another way. Uh, upside down smiley face. Uh, well, yeah, six damage heals are bad. You know, over triggers. Ah, it's, that, it's that discussion again, right? It's that discussion again. Um, but at least you can hit over uh, six damage heals. But sometimes you just you just you just have to deal with it, right? Sometimes it just it's how it is. Um, so here is his Vanguard list. He's still running Colossus. Still running Colossus with you know feels like an old style deck. It's just a yeah. This is pretty much just um, BT not a BT or five list. It's the first boost list plus two of these cards, right? <laughs> and some fronts and some fronts. Surprised he's not running the uh, the Grade 2 R because that, that's like super cheap, right? That is ins insanely cheap, I think. And I think it kind of just does kind of better. Does, does pretty much the same thing. So yeah, well, good job. Good job placing. Um, but hopefully you had fun with the Digimon tournament as well. It says he had a boss, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, we have Bastion. So let's look at some... Oh, do we really have to look at Japanese Bastion lists? All right. All right, this one's running with Fel Sauce. I, okay, last week we did the count. Um, there's not that many Bastion lists this week, just saying. Um, but I think last week I also counted it wrong, right? That's what happens when, you, when you're bad. When you get older, you become a more... Uh, your brain works less. You can't count higher than, than X numbers. So yeah, you just get confused, right? You just get confused. So uh, this one is running with Fel Sauce. So I, I guess I add this to, to, the, to the... Like a one, like, like one for new cars. Because the front triggers and orders don't really count as new cards, right? We're looking at high rarity cards, right? Prideful Dragons, Foul Sauce, high rarity cards. So this is one for the high rarity section. Uh, this one is another one. Okay, so more people running Rafal Sauce. This is like two for the ra team Rafal Sauce. Um, what about here? Is this, is this, uh, no, no, this is just, uh, this is just an old deck. So yeah, one, one, two, right? One, two, yeah. And any, any high rarity stuff? No. 2-2. Two, two. All right. So we, we evened it out again. We even it out. Okay. Foul Sauce is 2-3. Like, here's the thing. Like, when I saw this deck, the the one thing that came out to me was this table looks really nice. It looks like a very solid table, right? Like it, it, it looks like you could probably buy this from, like, an Ikea, but the wood 
on this table looks kind of pretty solid, right? Pretty solid. So I feel like, you know, I wouldn't mind getting a table like this. What do you guys think, right? What do you guys think? It, it looks like a good table, right? It looks like a good table, right? Yeah. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, so, okay. so we're at 2-3. Two, 2-3, three. Two, three, right? 2-3. All right, uh, next we have is, okay, Rufalsos, uh, two, two, four. Wait, did I, did I screw up the count again? Uh, was this, yeah, yeah, it's two, four, sorry. I just wanted to look at the table. That was my excuse. Two, four. Uh, and then in Japan, here's, we got another, I think this is the last Japan list, probably. Unless there were no Bastion lists. Actually, I don't think there were any Bastion lists. All right, this is a three, three, four now, because no new cards, no new cards. Um, next we have, okay, no, no, that's it. Here we're on to, uh, here we're on to some, uh, VG top decks deck. So the new cards won today, unless we include these, but you know, it's at three, four now. Uh, this is from Nick Jack 23, the Deuce remote fight server. First place was Robin Tanujaya playing Bastion. Second was Tommy Kristanto playing, uh, Brant Gates. Third was Andrew Gunawan playing Keta Sanctuary. So this is a first place deck, uh, very standard, literally no new cards, except for fronts and things. So I guess it's like a 4-4, right? It's a 4-4. Uh, second gate was Seraph Snow. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty good Seraph Snow. Running the execution card, I don't really like that. I don't like, I don't like, like okay, the, the best play I can think of with the execution card is what? You, you go, I ride my, I ride line my grade two. And they call a card down that they want to call next turn. And you go, surprise, surprise, bro. Send it to the drop zone. And it's like, oh, okay. It's a two card combo. Um, I guess if you use the hand, the hand, um, the hand prison, you can do the same thing too. But it's, it feels so gimmicky. It feels so gimmicky. Like one of these cards could have definitely just been another Rouge, I think. So otherwise, yeah. Well, good job. Good job. Um, third place was another Bastion. Uh, has he got new cards? He's got one new card. All right, so four, five, four, five. Okay. The new cards are, are winning again, right? It's a comeback, but just like last week, it's pretty close, right? The next Bastion list we have is Squall. Uh, he's running no new cards. Yeah, he's only got no, no high rarity. Actually, is that even, is he just, has he even got fronts? No, he's actually just not running no, no, no new cards at all. So it's like five, five now, five, five, right? Um, yeah, so yeah. His, he's got getting wrecked by Bruce isn't fun. Ban Leonard. Anyway, very shameless, but VG top deck. Well, it's fine. It's fine, man. It's cool. Like, totally, totally old school cards. Bastion, the best investment of all time, right? Uh, next we have is Belfizer. Uh, took first place at my locals on Saturday. Uh, and he's running. <sighs> Nearly got us, man. Does this count? I guess this count as new cards, right? It's like, uh,. I guess Blaster Dark is got. Like you look at this like, oh, it's a PBA. Oh, nah, it's just Bastion. It's just Bastion. But he's running new cards. So this is like, uh, it's like five, six now. Five, six, yeah. But kind of unique running a different ride chain, getting that extra drive ride chain. Um, I still think the Bastion ride chain is better, personally, but this gets, this can technically retire things. If someone is being aggressive to you while still getting extra drive and, uh, uh, you see, you see, it come up once in a while. You see, it come up once in a while, right? Uh, I guess it's also like a surprise, surprise. It's, it's you thought it was me, PBA, but it's actually Bastion. Lol. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good job. Good job. And then the last deck we have here is from Derek Dow. All right. So Good Games Molly Tournament. The first place was Camelo Versace, and he was running Bastion. And is this a new deck? Uh, all right, it's 6-5, it's, it's favoring, right? Looks like the uh, the old school boys have won this round this week. Uh, second place was Derek Dow himself. He was running Bruce. Oh, we can look at this list. Uh, a three Eden list, eh? All right, okay. Better net deck this down, boys. <laughs> three Eden list. I think, I think he could do better. I think, this, wait, is that three DSLs already? Oh, wow. This guy hates money, it seems. Mm. Must have gotten promoted at work or something if he's he's affording this kind of DSRs. <laughs> uh, is he is he running crits? He's running eight crits still. Okay, wrong over trigger, boys. Sorry, I think this is the wrong over trigger, man. 
you have to keep up with the meta, you know. I know he was focusing on zero these, uh, this past week. Uh, good job as well. He did pretty well at that Shiryasha uh, tournament. Came second. So, congrats to him. Congrats to him. Um, and thanks to Shiryasha for hosting that tournament as well. And the Morikawa boys for running it. So, excellent stuff. Good to see some good community effort. Um, but yeah, you know, Derek came second. I guess that's where this DSR money is coming from, right? He's he won some money from playing zero now. He can put it all into the TCG and hopefully he can buy me a dinner. <laughs> all right, in the third place, we have Fraser Dealove playing Surf Snow. And uh, he's okay. I think this is a pretty standard standard list. I can I can dig this. I can dig this four front as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, no complaints. I don't have any complaints with this list at all. Uh, and then in fourth place, we have Jason Trong with Orphist. So, uh, Orphist, yeah, two, I think, feels like they've learned, right? They, they've learned, they, they've, they've built decks that I have no, I have nothing against. I actually have nothing against, right? So, uh, good job. Good job, everyone. Uh, you, you did well, you did well. Okay, so we have Hexa Orbs this week as well. And it's always nice to see Hexor. It is a underrated deck, I think. It's definitely gotten improvements from before, but um, you know, everyone's still on the Bastion train. It's it's kind of understandable because Bastion just it just works, right? It just works. Uh, last week I think we saw heavy Lapisto builds, right? This week I think we kind of we'll see, we'll see. This deck kind of returned back to the facade and won Lapisto, and it's fine. Um, Nook Palto, right? I think I think they everyone's kind of realized Palto is just kind of bad. Um, you can just add better cards, right? More, more ones, more threes, probably just to sort it out, sort it out. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, the next hexa orb we have here. Um, he oh, okay, we're back. To, we're back to the Lapisto, the Lapisto build. Um, not a heavy grade three build count as well, which I think is like, it's kind of. I do still prefer the heavy grade three, heavier grade three counts. Not like super heavy, but just heavier, just because. Um, grade threes work well with the uh, with over triggers, and you can always kind of you have a good chance in stacking that. So knowing when to just pop out your grade threes and, and going ham is, I think, very very strong and just a super easy win condition to go for. Uh, and then we have another Japanese list here. This one is still not a really heavy grade three list. It's not even running the pistols, which is kind of insane, kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah, all right. That's nothing really special though about this list. And then lastly, we have Blueberry. All right, he went 4-0 at locals with Hexa, uh, missing a few cards from set two, but deck still performed great. Yeah, going 4-0. Look at, look at this. Three Lapistos, um, three of the high roll. You know, when you check it, call to the field. This is a heavy grade three build. I can get behind this. The only thing I can't get behind is two Owines or Oween. This card is. Um, you kind of need it, right? I'd probably replace these two with these two, maybe. Uh, that's that's just that's just my thoughts. I really don't like this card. I don't really like the sorceress. You know, CB1 to retire. This feels so so average. It's just so average. You know, there's nothing that you really need to retire in this metagame. So I think um, just maxing out on, on Owens to be able to just top deck check is just superior in every way. So overall, good job, Blueberry. You did well, and congratulations. Now we have. An anomaly in the Japanese meta, and that is Monster Strike. And it's actually crazy to see the amount of Monster Strike decks that have that, that are out this week that have been top in this week. Um, and it's you know raising some thoughts: is this actually a pretty strong deck? I mean, in the major tournaments, we haven't seen it top that many times. We saw it top like once in the first week, second week. There weren't that many tournaments, so unfortunately, nothing happened. But is this actually going to become a really decent collab deck? I mean, way better than Token Rambo, I think. I think some players have really rated this pretty high as well, like relatively high. Could be a really good tier two, tier three deck, maybe. So that's probably what it is. But if we look at some of the grade three, like ride lines, um, a lot of them are definitely quite playable. So this is the Lapless build, right? Lapless, just when it when it's boosted attacking a Vanguard, um, you can retire three of your opponent's regards. It's pretty insane. And then if you Persona Road this turn, um, you can also decrease your opponent's Vanguard power to like zero. So just by itself, this Vanguard, th this Vanguard effect, um, basically it's pretty stacked, right? It's pretty stacked. So we have one, one, two, two Lapless here. Is, is it Precure? Yeah, two, two Lapless builds. And then we have Uriel as well. Uriel, if you don't know, it's like an on attack. Um, if you Persona Road this turn, 
Uh, you can choose any number of cards from your soul and call them to empty open regard circles and then send the rest to the drop zone. And then when your boost when it's boosted, you can retire all your opponents back for regards. Um, so these are of course these all require some cost, but they're like very simple costs, like discard one to retire like three. Seems like very worth it, right? So overall, like, yeah, we got Uriel builds here. Um, I think we have four Uriel builds, so this seems to be the most um most played, at least this week. Last week we saw some as well. Um, but last week we also saw a lot of Lapless. So yeah, just like you have a bunch of cards here that can also, you have a few cards at least that can make empty spots. So you can make like multi attacks as well as, you know, getting retired is just pretty insane. Um, the, ne the next one we have is, this is Excalibur. I think this is the TD one. This is just a very simple on attack. It gets 10k. Um, and then when you attack and you have Persona Road this turn, you can stand like one of your regards. So you can make four attacks. I don't, I think this one's kind of more budget, not that super intense. The other ones are definitely better. Um, but it made it, it made a top showing. And then next we have, I think this one's Nostradamus, right? Is it Nostradamus? Yeah. There's so many different rarities in this set. Like, this is actually insane. Like, you <laughs> don't know which one's. But Nostradamus, um, it's when you place it on the Vanguard or Regard Circle like in 10k. And then on the Vanguard Circle at the end of battle, if your Persona Road, um, give a unit 10k and a crit until end of turn. So, eh, get some power. Get some power. It's it's kind of nice. Um, nothing too special though, in my opinion. Um, and then I think this one's another Nostradamus one. Yeah. Or is this a? I think this is a Benzaiten one. All right, Benzaiten uh, on attack. If you persona road, uh, your opponent can't use auto abilities, so no nulls. And then on hit, you give your front row regards 10k power. So it's hard to guard. And then if you no guard it, your other cards become your other regards become hard to guard. So that's kind of that's that's half decent, I guess. That's half decent. We have only one of that. Then we've got Pandora. So Pandora is when you Persona Ride, you give 10k minus 10k to your opponents, uh, any units, and then you can Soul Blast one to gain 10k. But if your opponent's Vanguard is less than the original power, um, you give 10k to your front row instead. So you know another minus power, but you know then you can stack power and, and buff everything up. Um, it's pretty pretty cool. And then we've got I think three pandora decks so that's also pretty popular we saw this last week too there were a few pandora decks last week and then last week we have gehenna so this one is uh when your unit is retired you put it into your soul instead uh, even your guardians so when they're retired you put it into your soul and then if you have another unit in this column as well you can soul blast five and for this turn this unit battles the front row so it's like a vermilion effect uh soul blast five quite high but since everything goes to your soul it works out like that, so kind of interesting. We haven't seen this pop up quite quite often at all, but I think this is the first time, but its effect doesn't seem too bad either. So overall, like we've got a lot of different like grade threes being run in all these decks, but they all seem quite good, especially when you compare them to, to the token rumble ones. The token rumble was like, uh, I think the most played ones, yeah, you get, you get a confirmed persona ride next turn, but this one's like, your opponent's field disappears, you make multi-attacks, you minus like 10k to your opponent. These effects seem quite good, so I can kind of see why there is a lot of popularity with this. And um, relatively, it's a relatively strong deck, I guess. These decks are relatively strong, so it'd be interesting to see how this collab set is developing um, for, the, for, for the entire meta, right? And when it will maybe drop off. And then maybe this means like Shaman King might be quite strong, right? So, yeah. Pretty interesting. Bit weird. Pretty interesting. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for this. But moving on, we have Nirvana here, and um, we can see here that you know, Nirvana is the the deck that slowly went from you know at major tournaments at least it was kind of eh, it's not that great. It's good, but it's not that great. But now it's kind of become slowly become like one of the stronger powerhouses of the entire format. And same thing at locals. There are a lot of local showings for Nirvana. A lot of the a lot of the decks are still a bit different. Like in the big tournaments, we've seen a lot of players just cut the Valientes at local level. They still keep it in. This guy is definitely keeping. He's running four Valientes. He doesn't want to let it go at all. Um, but you know, he's lowered the Virene account. He doesn't really have any good boosters for Trickstar. But you know, he's just totally relying on that Persona ride. But he's running four more of Gojo, so he's got basically eight counter charge units in his entire deck. It's pretty insane, right? It's pretty pretty crazy. It means you can go ham on the counter blast, and that just means you can spam Nirvana still quite heavily and spam arcs without fear of, you know, um, getting getting stuck. So I guess I guess it's a nice tech. It's a nice uh, 
you know, gets that, uh, how do you say it? You know, puts that, I don't know. I forgot all the things. You don't have to worry about it. That's it. It's basically it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. All right. Uh, next Nirvana list we have here is uh, No Valiente. So we're starting to, are we seeing the, the No Valiente? Oh, actually, before we didn't see any Togashi Rashi in this list, right? You know, we saw a tangent there, but no Togashi Rashi. So the soul. The soul, is that going to be an issue? That was the biggest problem before, right? So, ooh, yeah, maybe have soul problems. This guy won't have any soul problems in this lineup at all. And, um, you know, no Valiantes, because I think it's low value, but, you know, three Virenas, I think is correct. And I think this is, okay, this is pretty much a list I would be playing. Maybe I would change the draws or fronts. That's about it. That's it. All right, so a uh, good list. Good standard list. Standardized standard list. Next here, uh, two Valiantes. Um, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not on the Valiente train. Just saying. Just saying, everyone. So, I mean, we can count it, right? There's currently two Valiantes and one non-Valiente, right? But you know, uh, three Virenas, still good. Three Takashi Rashi, yeah. All right, good stuff. Uh, next, um, are we seeing Valiantes? Uh, no Valiantes. So we're at two two, right? Two two. Um, four to gosh, is this, oh, this is quite high rarity as well. So good stuff, good stuff. Except this part, this part is not high rarity. Um, and running draws, draws, so. Fronts, no fronts. I guess they want the draws. So currently 2-2, two, two, um, you know, two, I think it's 2-3 now in favor of no Valiente. This guy's cutting like two Togashi Rashi for two Gojo. So, um, I guess this is pretty interesting. We haven't really seen this pop up quite often, these Gojo techs. Um, but you know, you can cut some for Gojo's, so I guess, I guess it's pretty good. Um, and then here, we go, okay, we're back to 3-3, three, three, Valiantes, Damari. Okay, this is kind of a list that we probably saw in the first week of the, of the set release, because people were still experimenting with Damaris, and going, is this good or not? I mean, is, is Aruna good or not? Um, is Valiantes still good or not? Uh, one Aruna, is that enough? So, you know, it's... He's basically still one Goju. He's basically thrown at everything, so he's still testing. Still seeing which cards are good. Only three Urger as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know about this one. Um, next list we have is uh, No Valiente list. So we're at three, four in favor of No Valiente. You've got the Kizan Raging. This is, uh, I think this is kind of like a, the Tokyo tech. <laughs> when we look at the Tokyo Nirvana lists we've been seeing, or in that region, we saw a lot of... Uh, a, People running Kizan Rages as the the backup grade one with a few Arunas, but everywhere else we didn't really see it. Or is it the Kanto tech? You know, maybe that region. I I'll just call it Tokyo tech. Uh, so yep. Um, so yeah, it's like three four in favor of uh in favor of no no Valiantes, right? So that's it's pretty cool. Yeah, we saw Damaris instead. Uh, no Valiantes. So Myron, Myron, Myron's kind of outdated. Myron's kind of outdated. So yeah, we're at like 3-5, so no Valiente seems to be winning, uh, 100%. And then here, oh, okay, spoke too soon. Valiente's are back. Uh, and this is like what, like 4-5, four, 4-5, five, four, five, yeah? Uh, cool, cool, three Runas, two Togashi Rashi, yeah. Two Virenas, all right, all right, pretty, pretty basic there. Uh, so 4-5, and then here, no Valiente's, all right, we're at 4-6, four, 4-6, six. Four, six. is that it? Oh, it's just a promo. Just a promo. Yeah, four six. Um, ten Shesteds, No keys on rage. Only two Arunas. Um, four Virenas. This is maxed up as Virenas. Okay, all right. That's. Uh, you, you don't forget, guys. Virena is still, you know, a big, still a beater, but you know, you, you can't really use its skill too much because it's Soul Blast too. Uh, but usually, if you're running that much, you want to max out on the Takashi Rush. So I think that part is a bit. You know, you can kind of just maybe remove Aruna at this point. All right. So, all right. Pretty good. And then we've gone to VG top decks time. So we've got Illusion. We've got first place at remote locals today. Overtrigger helped me so much in rounds two and three. Super fun tournament. Um, he's still running Virenas, uh, Valiente. So pretty cool. Um, three Aruna, four, four Togashi Rashi, four fronts. All right. I like to see that people moving to the fronts. So, uh, so good job. Good job. And then lastly, we have uh, Vision Core. So. This is 12 player locals won 4 0 by the Chowns, piloting a Nirvana deck I built but not yet tested. So they won. Um, but unfortunately for Core, well, not, not Core didn't won, the Chowns won. But unfortunately for Core, um, he says, as for myself, I was on the complete opposite end of the rankings uh, last this week with Eugene. So uh, the Eugene run back, you know, the Eugene dream. Gotta try it another week, man. Gotta try another week. So. 
This guy is running one Valiente. One va Valiant. Still running one Valiente. So I think this, this just makes it equal, right? It's like 6 6. But you're running three trade ins, or three Horn of Blessings to kind of um, draw, like ditch the, the Overdress to draw more. But then he's only running two Arcs, which is kind of interesting. Two Arcs. I think. I feel like the Arcs is just superior to the Horn. So you can play one Horn and two Arcs, I think is better. Uh, only three Trickstar as well. I guess you're not. You're not afraid, right? You're not afraid of Trickstars disappearing, but Trickstar as a starter does confirm you getting a Trickstar. We did see this, I think, in the first week of the um, first or second week of the set two release, just people experimenting with this idea again. Um, but I think everyone moved back to the Dragon Egg and just still maxed out the Trickstars. But yeah, pretty cool list. A uh, good job, good job to the Chowns. Uh, so yeah, good luck with your Eugening. All right. <laughs> We have some overlords this week, right? Some overlords. Overlords have kind of dropped in popularity because Nirvana has just been shooting up in terms of uh, popularity. And it's kind of makes sense because I think the ceiling for Nirvana is way higher than Overlord. Overlord just kind of, you know, it does its very simple thing, um, but it does it pretty well. Uh, here, he is just, I think this is just a very standard list, you know, Tentersteads and um, Gojo's, and that's pretty much it. Nothing really crazy, especially he's running some Reno's, extra Reno's for the early game regression. But yeah, all right, standard list, good to see. And then here we have another list here is with Tribash. Now, I think I, think, I talked with, with Kevin Cho recently about this, running Tribash, and he's just like, he loves Tribash. And just the extra pressure and things like that is just really nice, so. Okay, I can dig that, I can dig that, you know? Extra pressure is always good. Extra crits is always nice. Tribash is the best dinosaur because he's doesn't have a weirdo name. So good job. Um, I don't agree with running like what well, Randall here though. I mean, this is Randall, right? Just, just for the soul charge. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Not not a fan. Not a fan. But yeah. Otherwise, you know, Tribash. Am a fan. This one not a fan. You know, two one thumbs up, one thumbs down. It comes a thumbs to the side, right? All right. So all right, cool. And then we've got Eugene's. All right, we actually got Eugene's this week. Um, everyone trying to do the Eugene Dean. It's not, it's not that hard anymore, guys. Eugene got buffed. Right now, it's the PBA dream. Remember, well, not PBA dream. Um, Phantom Blaster Dragon Dream. It's PBD. Oh, I keep on, I keep on getting mixed up with Zero now, man. Because Phantom Blaster Abyss is so broken. But yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's the Shadow Paladin dream, guys. That's where you have to try and get your wins now. Eugene, Eugene's just too good. He's just too good. There's actually four Eugenes that topped this week. Uh, so yeah, um, this is, you're running four Renos with this list, very, very aggressive, very aggressive. Um, like, a one of everything here, which is kind of insane. I thought you want to run four of this, right? Four Draggers, because that's just an insane, decently insane card. But it looks like he's not. He's just running one of everything, so. A Gojo's was a big tech that we saw, so. Kind of, kind of cool. He's still running Nigel's, really? Hmm. Weird. Uh, next list here. This one is way more straightforward and... Probably correct, I think, you know, four Tribash, 15k beaters, um, Eugene Ride Line, uh, Dragriz, Kizan Rage. This is just, this is like as standard Eugene as it gets, I think. As standard Eugene as it gets. So if you want to net deck something, it's this one. It's this one. Um, also, if you want to net deck one, he's, he's Mr. Tanks with the naked card standard casual. He went four, fourth place, fourth place. Uh, he Round one, he played against same name, Alchemagic. Wow. All right. <laughs> but then... For the rest of the rounds, he played against Prisons and beat them all, so... Looks like he has a good matchup against Prisons? <laughs> Maybe? And we can see this list is pretty straightforward. I think it's similar to the previous list, except this is kind of weird, this is different. He's not running any Gojo's, it looks like, for the counter charge. Um, Gojo, a big popular card. I think Gojo is pretty good. I think Gojo is pretty good, so... Ah, good job. Good job, Mr. Tanks. I mean, you came fourth, so that's not first, so you're... Your, uh, your journey is still ongoing, right? But maybe you'll get the dub next week, right? And then next we have is Best Girl Summer. So this is Team Best Girl, right? Uh, only took two tries to beat the Eugene Challenge first place list from Team Best Girl's first aid Corgi video coming soon. Yep, yeah, okay, he finished the challenge. He completed the challenge uh, in only two weeks. Only two weeks, well, at least two tries. At least two tries, uh, so. Pretty, pretty standard list here too. Oh, he's running three of the uh, the 10k booster, but you know, otherwise the rest of the deck is just you know the good cards, and you put them with Gene. Um, buy our hats. So they're selling these hats, are they? 
<laughs> All right, good job, good job, buddy. Good job. You can uh, you can relax now. You can play different decks. You can play different decks. Uh, we have one Magnolia list today. This is from J Jeremy. Uh, got second with Magnolia. Deck's kind of bad, but was fun. Deck's kind of bad, but still came second. Uh, I mean, I think I think it's all right. I guess in the current meta game, of course, it's. It's got some real bad matchups, but uh, I think you're playing you're playing the right thing. Urshla with Kuchi, 100% approved. This is wait, this is very high rarity, right? Like, well, nearly nearly high rarity. So he's just missing two Magnolias. Wow, this is pretty pretty insane. Pretty insane. Pretty nice. Uh, Elephant, you know, Elenia. All right, I can I can dig this. This is a good list. Congratulations for a uh, second. And then we have Zorgas. A few Zorgas this week. So this is a Japan Zorga list. Uh, one Shark, one Shark. I can't really, a lot of glare, unfortunately. Uh, one Regurgitation. I like I like cutting the Regurgitation to one. I think that's correct. Four Grief, four Condensation, two Nectars, and one Agony. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, second Japanese list here, got th three Agonies. I mean, when I see three, like, people think Agony is pretty useless now. I still like it. And when I see a list running three Agonies, I think, it's pretty good. I mean, pretty good. I, I know, I know people are gonna hate, but you know, hate is gonna hate, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So three agony, three grief, three nectar, three spiritual condensation, and no ghost chase, I guess. So I get, you know, just get get the big pal cards, big big field for free. And just win like that. Yeah, I can I can dig that, you know. If you, you can run multiples of this, multiples of this, get basically free from that. And, you know, you have shocks. Uh, okay, okay, it works, it works. And then lastly, out of orange, got second place again. A loss to Orphis, but went 4-1 and beat Magnolia, Bastion, Zorga, and Bruce. My undefeated was close, as the matches were best of three, and I got over-triggered today. Super fun, though. Good job, good job. I'm um, also going to this... This lineup, all right, where is the order line? It's wild intelligence. Wild intelligence, okay, all right. Uh, one regurgitation, one nectar, uh, three grief, despair, and rejection, and three spiritual body condensation. So, so no agonies, uh, okay, no agonies. It's fine, it's fine, but the rest of this is kind of cool. You got, you know, one of the, one of the grade threes here to kind of make your grade three lineup slightly better. Uh, you know, this is just standard. Four, four, uh, four Husk Dragon, okay. One Shark, yeah, I dig the one Shark. I mean, I think two Shark, people like two Shark, but I think two Shark is a bit too excessive, because you know, um, you're only gonna be using one anyway. Uh, but yeah, all right, pretty cool list. I like it, good job, good job. And then now we've moving on to Prison. Uh, Prison, the big, the big favorites so far, I think, the, the big winners, but, <sighs> I like when I look at a prison list, I like to say, is the theory correct? And sometimes I feel like the theory is just not correct. You have four Lamones, but nothing to use the prison cards for. <sighs> I mean, you can overcharge a bit to just make sure you never lose. You never lose the um the prison setup for your rouges. But I just feel like it's it's excessive. You can just run better cards here. You can run like the order or any orders. Or more of her, more of her, more orders, just to put on more pressure. Um, so yeah, not a huge fan of just running the Lamones for no reason. Uh, this one we here have the execution card. Um, like I said before, you can have a nice gimmick where you just kill a card that they put down. But I personally don't think it's that great. I, like a two card combo, um, it's, it's not good enough. You can just put more to make your grade one more consistent. I think is better. Uh, here we have a. Uh, all right, I think. So far, this theory looks correct, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think this is a pretty, pretty good list. I think, uh, you know, you've got this, you've got the, the core cards here, one prison, and then just, just split it between these defensive, early pressure. You can just throw this down and not feel bad. And then just hand, hand pressure, right? Hand pressure. So, all right, this is a, this is an approved list. Good job. Good job, Mr. Japan guy. Uh, here, um, Lamones. With a 13k booster, uh, I think okay. If if you wanna, tr only one Lamone though. Okay, so I can't really 
push too bad. So okay, this is a, this is a decent list. Only one Lamone, you know, you could have put it to anything else, but sure, it's just, just one. But, you know, running 13k booster is kind of okay, just to give you some more oomph to hit those numbers. So, all right, this is a, this is a decent list. Uh, here we have is, uh, mm, I think it's okay, right? I think it's okay. Another decent list here. Running, so people say you don't really really need to run that many Burby means, but remember in the in the matchup against Leonard, you don't want to keep empty slots at the back, so this kind of just works as a booster and just goes away. Still get your counter charge, so I think it's pretty good. And then here is, he's running one of everything here, which is kind of, I don't think it's good. He's got a, he's, he's got the defensive order, which works well with the Lamone, but he's only running two roots. That's 100% wrong. So, uh, not a good, not a great list, not approved at all. Uh, but now we're on to the VG top decks again. We've got Zambonini Ringonini. So it went 3-1 last night at Mystic and 4-0 today at Game Night with Prison. So this is, looks like a tried and tested Prison deck. And the theory, I think it just looks 100% correct, right? You know, four hand pressure, more, three of these, you can just be aggressive with it. Four of the, uh, I, I mean, this can be like three or four, but you know, four just to make it more consistent. So yeah, good list, good list. I approve. This has been approved by me. Uh, Shy, first out of 12 at my locals tonight. Finally maxed out prison. Don't ask how much it costs. Okay. Don't worry. It will cost more. <laughs> it will cost more. Okay, so the theory, let's look at it. It's, it looks correct. Congratulations. Again. All right, looks like the, the English players are passing with flying colors. Flying colors. All right, good job, good job. And then here we've got I talked to Chie, went 6 0 and got first place in both premium and overdress with two very questionable decks this week. Um, and this one is the overdress deck. So 100% Aurora Battle Prince is no robots allowed. So this is like a this is a fan deck. This is a fan deck, you know, no robot dot deck. Um, but it looks like it's okay. Uh, you're able to do pretty well with this. I guess you have to run Lamone, but because you're running Lamone, you've got this, uh, you've got the defensive order. So that, that's a nice. Nice, good theory card right there. Nice theory combo. Uh, we've got the, the grade three. This one's like a CB1. I think it's prison and then get 5K. So it's hitting some numbers. A 13K booster. And uh, what was this one? This grade one? Um, oh, it's if you're like five in the prison, you can counter charge one or soul charge three. That's right. So I guess you don't have any other cards to run that's any good, right? So you're kind of forced to run it, but it's also not a too bad card. So, okay, I, I think I think you, you passed just from this theory and you did pretty well anyway, right? so. It's good, it's good. Good job, good job. All, all the English players have passed so far. And then here we've got the, uh, all right, Seraph Snow 2-1 list. Overall, list feels really good. Resource management feels great in the mirror. So, okay, all right, ooh. Prison World, nice, 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 nice. And this is, this is just the, I think it's a TD Perfect God, so okay, it's Perfect God, so, but otherwise, yeah, looks like the rest of the list, the theory is correct again, you know, I like it, I like it, so good job, good job. All the, all the uh, VG top decks, the global team has passed, passed with Prison, so it's good to hear, good to hear. Brand Gate represents. Uh, we also have Orphis, they're also from Gant Gate, don't forget. And um, we've got the world, uh, the world searcher with here. Um, we actually have, there's, there's a lot of English Orphist players as well. So it's good to see. Here we have, uh, you know, four, is it Eclipsing now? I think they keep on changing the name, but yeah, two of this, four of this, two of this. All right, it's, it's pretty standard. Orphist, not that popular in Japan versus uh, Prison, it seems. Um, but both have kind of seen declining play just when Nirvana has suddenly become good because, you know, it's just another strong deck to contend with. Okay, Istalates. Um, four of this is kind of unneeded. Four, four of the new the new orders is kind of unneeded because it's basically searchable. Um, so, yeah. Uh, otherwise, the rest of it is fine. And then we have a... This one's apparently called the Link Joker list. Link Joker deck list. <laughs> but running four, four of the four of this Moonlight again is kind of not right. And you know, after you test it, you realize you don't need that many. I think so. This is not needed. And he's like, you could technically play more if you're running like the, the world order, but at the same time, maybe not, because you could just run the retire order instead. Um, but he's also running an Isolate build, so uh, I guess it really <sighs> He doesn't have much counter charges, I guess. So, 
Oh no, he's got four. He's got four, so can't really. Yeah, no, just don't. You don't need four of this. Just don't need four of it. Uh, and then this is the last JP list we're gonna see today. I think this is the one of the better JP lists we're gonna see. And that is just, uh, yeah, just basically a bit of everything, right? A bit of everything. Six orders. I think six, I oh know, seven orders. Yeah, seven orders is fine. And, you know, some defensive power and things like that. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, we've got the English side. So we've got Azar Aboy. Well, not really English. This is from Brunei. Um, but yeah, first place was Asmi Noodle playing Brand Gate. Second place was Azar playing Dark State, Sparrow Magnus. Third place was Sting playing Overlord. And fourth place was Akoi playing Overlord. So here's where all the Overlord players are, right? All the Overlord players. Right, this is running the, the World Searcher. So that's cool, right? So World's getting into this. And then the rest of the office is just pretty similar. So this is Azar's Barrow Magnus list. All right, only three barrows, so it gives you more space to uh, push hard, I guess. Push hard. So uh, good, good. Yeah, got the new, got some of the new cards here. And then, all right, third place we got the Overlord. Right, Overlord. Good, good times. Very, very standard Overlord list. <laughs> oh no, it's not. It's running this order. Ah, uh, yeah. I suddenly like this Overlord list less. I suddenly like this Overlord list less. <laughs> and then lastly, we have uh, a higher rarity Overlord list with the 15k beta, uh, no defensive tricks. So yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, but we also have uh, Azar again. This one's from Urban Games Tournament. The previous one was from uh, Gamers Tavern. So this one's from Urban Games. Uh, first place was Lee playing, uh, playing well, Orphus. Uh, second place was Hasmon playing, I think it's Token Rambu. Third place is Akoi playing Overlord again, and fourth was Major playing, um, uh, huh, Dragon Empire, right? Yeah, e Eugene? Yeah, Eugene, okay, there we go. So, yeah, so first place, again, we've got the, the, the Orphis dot deck, and it's running just the Islate instead, so, I think it's Orphis, it's kind of split between, like, Islates and, uh, just pure world searches. But you know, he's only got the two two minutes, so that's good. Uh, this one is the fatty. This one gets fat. You know, I think if your field is full, it gets 5k. Um, so good old token Rambu. Uh, third place, we have just the Overlord deck. Um, I think we've probably seen it. We've seen a Koi uh, top. So this is the semi semi high rarity Overlord build. And then the fourth place, we got Major with Eugene. All right, so another Eugene. Oh wait, no, this is it's like Eugene Overlord. <laughs> I think I. Th I swear I've seen you, the, the Eugene Overlord thing before, right? So, yeah, Eugene Overlord though, huh? I guess more ways to to get rid of their stuff, control the field and get high roll of Eugene, so pretty good. I mean, we, we've seen a bunch of weird hybrids of Eugene. We've seen like Virena Eugene, this time we're seeing Overlord Eugene. What's next? Nirvana Eugene? Uh, yeah, no, we, we did see that, sorry. But yeah, what's next? Is it, is it the Miko one from the new start deck? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we've got Maverick Martel. We had our first set two tournament in Budapest last week with 17 players. First was Orphist, all right, running the Istlate build and got the old uh, column attacker. Uh, second was Seraph Snow. Uh, yeah, let's, let's look at this. All right, okay, theory is correct. Yeah, I think it's working. All right, good job, you passed. And then third was Phantom Blaster Dragon. Woo. Finally, we see we see a deck. Uh, this is just kind of a list that I think it's pretty pretty standardish, kind of. Um, running facade for the counter charge, uh, it's grade twos Maha, and then just running a top deck uh, checker, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Eh? You don't have much space to run anything else. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess you check top deck, then you pop it, and you. Retire, so uh, good job. Finally, have PBD <laughs> won this week, right? At least one it didn't win, but it came third. But at least we had one. Uh, next, we had is Marcelo Leman with B's card drop tournament. Um, the first place was Nando with Orphist, right? Uh, good, 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 good. Uh, second was Cello with a uh, Baron Magnus, uh, another Baron Magnus. It's good to see, good to see. And then third was Yubong with Bastion. Good old Bastion. Uh, no new card Bastion, but you know, Bastion is so good. You don't need new cards. No, not even the fronts, right? You don't even need the fronts, right? All right, good job, good job. And then uh, lastly, the last overdress deck, at least in the main section we have is Ootman, right? Just got third 
top at locals in a row with Orphist. Max Rarity deck definitely brings good luck. This deck has everything you could hope for, to be honest. Amazing rush tools, field control, big hand for tanking, huge dumbness for attacking. Good times all around. Right, good times indeed. And he's running the Estelate build. Uh, you see the one, only the one Eclipse Moonlight, uh, three retired orders. So he's running up to eight orders. That's pretty crazy. All right. Uh, and then the rest is just new, new good cards. The new good cards, Alva Dead, you know, Thumbarino, very max ready. So yeah, wow. Max it out, boys and girls. <laughs> very bling, very bling. If only the orders were bling as well, only the full text, then it'll, it'll be uh, perfect, right? Perfect. So that is overdressed this week. Pretty, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Just we're seeing you know, five office lists from the foreign sides and you know, it's only five from the JP side. But I think uh, I think a lot of people have jumped on that monster strike train. Monster strike train, right? Uh, moving on, let's look at some V, right? V is still cool. And if you haven't seen the V collection reveals, they've been crazy good. They've been crazy good. I mean, I saw the OTT, like this is OTT, right? This is Battle Sisters. Tsukuyomi's coming back next next time, man. It's gonna be crazy. Next V collection. Ooh, it's gonna be very, very spicy. Uh, what is this though? <laughs> what is this? This is only running three battles. This is two COs. Looks like this guy is waiting for V collection, man. <laughs> Maybe his deck's not completed, but he's just waiting for V. Is that like a vanilla? Is it a vanilla battle sister? It is, eh? Huh. It's like the 9, 9k battle sister. I, I never knew it was out. Wow. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, next we have is a JC. BGC Remote Fight 20 Philippines. Um, ch uh, uh, champion after telling points. Set 2 is still delayed here in <laughs> Philippines and we're getting sick of set 1 meta. So they moved to, to V again. All right, that's good. That's good. It's Mordred. Mordred. With the Superior Ride Engine, all right? Is it? Do we have the Superior? Yeah, Superior Ride Engine Mordred. All right, good job, man. Superior Ride Engine Mordred. Nice. Uh, well, you see, I, I, I think people are getting slightly uh, bored of Overdress at some points. And I mean, if you're st still stuck on set one meta for sure, right? But set two is going to last for a long time. So I think like, you know, Luckily, we're getting some like release. I think we're getting a revival collection in English, and then we're getting V collection, right? So there's definitely something to look forward to, and there's a good time to try other formats as well. So don't don't burn yourself out just playing standard. All right. Okay. So next we have Vision Card Weeb, right? The AGCV Premium uh, Remove Fight using Tachi's Gigano Gaia. Right? I can't even pronounce these these uh these dinosaur names, even though they're so simple. If it's not Tribash. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> All right, got got third overall, so um, pretty good with Tarchies, man. With Tarchies, All right, it's cool. I mean, I think I saw his, I think I saw Cardu's tweets about the new, the new Tarchies uh, support and looking pretty decent, I guess. So, oh, we'll see, we'll see. All right, now we got some out of orange again. Got second place today at my locals of Nightmare Dolls and V Premium. What a trip! First place was Night Rose Grand Blue, the only deck I lost to. Thanks for the fun and a hashtag VG Top Decks. Yeah, good job, good job. It's interesting seeing Pell Moon again still doing pretty well, especially Nightmare Dolls. Nightmare Dolls, quite a fan favorite in the West, I think, uh, compared to the East. So yeah, uh, lots of lots of multi. I think I saw Vanilla play it a few times on stream as well. So it's like it's pretty cool to see it doing all those multi attacks. Yeah, but getting second place definitely definitely a, a big good. All right, so good job, good job. And then uh, next we have is some Bermuda Triangle. I mean, Highlander and not much. I think we've seen this one before, right? It's like, I swear I've seen this Makoto SP before. <laughs> but yeah, just the straight up Highlander list. It just does, does the Highlander things. Uh, we've got Sean again uh, playing, played Lupita Melody today for my locals. Hopefully Trans Graham is proud. Yep. Yep. I am. I am. Good job. Good job. When when four zero beat regardless Shadow Witches, Plants and Vert two zero in best of three. This is basically Carrot Expo and V. That's right. That's right. It is. It is. It is. It is dirty when it goes off. <laughs> yeah, good job. Good job, man. You know, 
keeping a keeping the dream alive, the Pina Melody dream alive. Uh, but then moving on to premium. All right, I've got Diotra here. I've got Ben's collection. Tom got six plays with Regalia. So uh, just straight up Regalia, it seems, um, in premium. So it's a, it's a stride deck here. I'm like, oh, the SAO as well. Is it Misaki? Is it a Misaki playmat? <laughs> yeah, Regalia, is it basically, it's basically Minerva, right? <laughs> So yeah, good job, good job. Um, swing, swing multiple times, win the game. I think you can stand like maneuver three times. All right, so pretty dirty, pretty dirty. Uh, next we got Dragon Empire. This is the Animal Man Ben's Collection Tournament. Okay, so there's bands. Okay, so with with the Ben's Collection Tournament, there's no no Adairu, no Gastille, no Fenrir, no Blade Master, no Songster, no Jambu Congo, and no Valkyrian. So with that in mind, uh, we have Grichu taking first place of Overlord. So kind of expect. You know, Overlord's still very strong, didn't get touched. Uh, easily, easily, uh, just without anything to stop it. You know, it's got defensive tricks. It wins the game, right? Good job. Rover Frenzy with Dragon Thighs. Dragon Thighs? The, yeah, the highlighted, what, what is? That's the, um, that's the new premium collection card, right? But, Thighs? Really? <laughs> Wait, what? It's kind of true, eh? It's got some fires there. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess. I guess. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, dra dragon thighs the deck. <laughs> but otherwise, just your good old, good old Nova deck, right? Uh, I don't see any strange. I don't see any strange like what neon geese or anything like that. So. Good job, good job. Third place, we got Spike Brothers. Spike, is this just aggro Spike Brothers? I mean, GB8 Spike should be pretty good in this format, right? You, you literally have nothing that can stop you, except for the Kagura deck that came first. Um, but even so, they need like multiple. So Spikes. And then fourth place, we've got Deertra with Coleco. Right, Coleco, all right, yeah. That, that works, Coleco works. You know, it didn't get touched as well, so. Um, randomly pop them and uh, and go Mimi or uh, Ichikishima and nothing, nothing, no one can do, nothing, no one can do. So uh, yeah, good job, everyone. Uh, next we have Bermuda Triangle. This is I talk Chie. So this is the six zero first place premium list uh, with a vanilla Zazen Anjuria Bounce Fest. Play Zazen five times in one turn on my GB8 for nine attacks. Ooh, ooh, that doesn't that doesn't sound fair. Doesn't sound fair. Uh, you have to draw your Zazen, right? Where's, where's the Zazen? Is it, uh, is it, uh, <laughs> oh no, there it is. It's at the top, all right? Crazy. All right, good job, good job. Uh, I think there's a, this is the, the G zone as well. All right, we've seen, we've kind of seen this G zone before. All right, so good, good stuff, good stuff. And then lastly, we've got some Stargates. We've got some Nova Grapplers. Uh, this is from Japan. I assume this list, what they do is they, Soul charge a bunch. They hope they don't soul charge their uh, their over trigger, and then they drive check like a billion times to try and trigger it, and then they kind of restand with like super amounts of power and crit, and you've got a bunch of these things. I think this is the this is the two crit guy, right? So it becomes like four crit, and then you kind of just try and destroy them like that, and then you can. Yeah, some things that can restand and restand your regards as well. So that's how you win. But that's how I assume this deck is played. But there's a lot of these weird decks from Japan that are like, I hope I don't. Uh, I hope my over trigger remains in my deck, or otherwise I don't have a good chance of winning. Dot decks, <laughs> which is pretty. They they seem super meme, super meme. Um, and then the last premium deck today we have is uh, B's card shop tournament results, and this is premium. First place was Lenang with Freeze Ray. Now, this is a pretty interesting, funny list, to be honest. Uh, no, this is not your average Link Joker list, because we can see that there's a gray on here. And is the not, this is not a V gray on, this is an old gray on. And that's the one where you vanish to leave things. So, the way I see this deck is you play super lame in defensive. You set up Glue Ball Avalanche as soon as possible to be able to start binding things. And then you use like things like Vario Ants, you know, get rid of get rid of you know markers and things like that that are annoying you. 
But most of all, like you pressure with a bunch of with with a bunch of crits, right? Your amnesty unlocks, this unlocks. Um, this stops your opponent from doing anything good by locking their front row. You can set up an early uh, free stride the rest of the game. And you can even go like set up glue ball and go into like a GB8. So that's like a like a bind X, right? Face down. So as long as you get to like 10 bind and play defensively, then on that turn you can ride a ground to vanish lead two and then ride a gorg, stride a gorg, and then you just Dorito end. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how I think the deck works. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny, I think. Um, <laughs> pretty interesting too. Normally we see a bunch of chaoses, but now it's it's freeze ray and and deleters. And you can build a few of these decks, right? You can build some of this deck because freeze ray is coming out in revival collection. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, and then the second place was Jotty with Ezel. Uh, so just your, your good old Ezel, go go fast, uh, unlock start, uh, not unlock, unlock G, G zone quickly, try to Ultima, win the game. And then third place we got Raka with Aqua Maximum Draw, so it's actually kind of interesting. I think this list, this is sim this is very similar to Weir Abs list, right, that we posted before, but the whole idea of this is to abuse your uh, Bubble Edge Draco Kid, um, and then like Restand a bunch of times you draw a billion cards you draw out the rest of your deck and then like you can get up to like some insane hands like well like 30 card hands or things like that and then you just win through uh hopefully as a blunt yeah blunt arena because as long as they don't have nulls there's nothing much they can do right you have more cards than them for sure and then you just pop them <laughs> and that's how you win so yeah this is a uh, this is pretty fun. I, I like I like these meme decks. They're, they're super fun. Um, and he managed to come third of it. So good job, good job. And that is all the premium decks we have this week. We have some pretty interesting ones, uh, but also we do have uh, some Discord lists as well. So let's grab them up. Okay. So the first list today we have is Usagi-san. One locals tonight with Bruce. Nineteen plays at Toy Wiz Collectibles in Nanuet, New York. Uh, Mabel Tech did so much work. So top four was first, uh, was uh, Usagi-san with Bruce, second was Magnolia, third was Baron Magnus, and fourth was Orphist. So we can look at the list here as well. This is the Bruce deck that was played. Uh, two Eden lists, uh, draws, draws, uh, yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Good job, good job. And then next we have Peter. Uh, first place, Peter V with Bruce at Kuro Cavern, July 28th. Um, second place, Peter with Overlord. Third place, Ruddy with Bruce. So we've got a Peter, Peter Mirror. It's got the uh, the funny stand trigger as the uh, the mat. But yeah, just another Bruce deck, as we can see. Bruce, Bruce Supreme. Uh, running crits and fronts, no draws. No draws yet. So a uh, good job. And then lastly, we have a Cure Cavern top four. We're here we have is first place was a Kai. Not me, but another Kai, it seems. Playing Bastion uh, and just running just the, the good old good old Bastion, right? Good old Bastion, nothing nothing crazy new tech, just doing work. Second place was Peter. I wonder actually first place well, it was a tie for first place. All right, so uh, tie for first place with Bruce again. Just the looks like a four Eden build now, four Eden build, and that's got a DS, DSR Bruce as well. Oh, cool. All right, cool. Uh, not still on the crits, no draws, no draws. And then third place we have Gordon with Nirvana. Um, with Valiantina and Damari, okay, all right. And then fourth place, we've got Will with Seraph Snow. Um, so, oh, interesting, interesting layout, but do they, do they pass the test? Yeah, yeah, all right, yep, this list looks correct. Good, pass the test. So overall, all the, all the prison lists, at least from the global side, the EN side have been pretty good. So big applause, big applause. And yeah, uh, good to see that set two has pretty much, I think, developed out overall. Um, with I think Monster Strike so far is just the big, the big like, wow, what's going on here? Uh, English set two, be interesting to see. Like I think I think a lot of the Ian players, maybe the Bruce, I think maybe needs a bit more theory work or something like that. But at least what the the Brant Gate side, I think that side has been just psh, they're crushing it, right? In English already on board with a lot of. A lot of text that I can totally agree with. So that's that's good to see. And we had some spicy premium lists. Again, guys, if you 
it, we're in here for a, for a long haul until set three. Of course, Lyrical Monastery is coming out that will change the format for English, at least. But don't be afraid to try some other formats. If you're a new player, you know, try V, try Premium. Uh, v Collections are the great way to start if you want to try V, as well as, you know, in Premium, you do use a lot of the V cards too. So give that a try, give that format a, a look. The next V Collection is absolutely massive. I, I am going through some testing and some discoveries. If you're interested in that, I did one yesterday. But, you know, the, the next V Collection format is going to be massive. I, I can feel it. I can already see it. So definitely, if you want to try something new as well, um, don't be just limited to just playing, you know, Overdress and go, I'm really bored of Overdress now. Um, I think, I think, yeah, V Collection will definitely, when it comes out, it's definitely, there's going to be people playing it and it's just going to be very accessible as well. So give that a try. And Revival Collection is coming up soon too. So just want to update some decks. Um, we can, we can do that as well. So that's it for this week. Remember, if you want to submit your lists, go to uh, hashtag VGTopDecks on Twitter. And then you can also submit on Discord. I do prefer you putting it on Twitter though, but you know, you can put it on Discord if you don't have social media and you put in the VG Top Deck submission page and it'll be put at the last, last bit here. And um, if I missed any of your lists, sometimes it does happen. Just ping me on Discord or send me a DM or tag me. Um, and then I'll kind of have to schedule you in for next week. Sometimes the Twitter does kind of mess up. Yeah, just let me know and we can sort that out. So. Good job. Good job, everyone. Hope you guys all have fun. Stay safe. Big thing. Stay safe, right? You can't play card games if you're sick or if worse happens, right? So um, be sure to just stay safe and I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye.